Hey guys, it's Sam and today I'm going to talk about my TBR for the Owls Readathon. If you are not familiar with the Owls Readathon, I will link the video for it down below from the creator and all of the stuff because this is a very complicated readathon. It's based around the Owls tests from Harry Potter from Hogwarts and basically there's careers, wizarding careers that line up with the kinds of owls and newts that you have to take and there are reading prompts based on the classes and Owls is a little bit easier than newts because newts gets far more complicated but Owls is like the first level of the test that you have to take in the Harry Potter world. So this readathon has a lot of moving parts to it, but I think a lot of you are probably familiar because it's one of the most popular readathons on booktube and couldn't have come at a better time when we all have a lot of time on our hands, am I right? Actually last year when I was working and everything was normal in life and we didn't know that a pandemic was headed our way, I actually read the most that I had read all year that year. I think I think it was one of my top two reading months for 2019 was during the Owls. So I have high hopes for this, but this is also why I chose three different careers that I wanted to pursue and then all the prompts that go with that. So let's just get into this and I can stop explaining because I'm sure you just want to see the books that I'm going to read, right? So last year for the newts I tried to pursue herbologist as my career but I didn't make it through. So I decided that that was one of the ones that I potentially was going to go with for the owls. And herbologist has three different class prompts. The first one is care of magical creatures and that's read a book with a creature with a beak on the cover. And for that I've chosen God's Grave which is the second book in the Nevernight trilogy by Jay Kristoff and there is a book with a raven in it. It's one of two books that I had that had creatures with beaks because I don't have a lot of bird books apparently. Then the second prompt was for the class Herbology and that is a title that starts with the letter M because this was Mimbulus Mimbletonia which is obviously a plant from the Harry Potter universe. And this was actually kind of hard because I don't have any books that start with the letter M on my TBR and I am not getting books from the library just to fill a prompt because as you guys know I'm trying to get my TBR down. I want to make a giant dent in my TBR with the Owls Readathon so I don't want to read books not on my physical TBR and I don't want to buy books just to read them for this. So I actually remembered that I could also read some comics and I do own Monstrous and I do want to reread the Monstrous books to catch up and catch up completely with the series sometime during this year. So even though I wasn't planning on doing that until after my TBR was down more, I decided I'll read Monstrous Volume 1, which technically is the name of the series, but I don't care. Monstrous, that's what I'm reading. That's the one that starts with an M. And then the third class was Potions, and that is a shrinking solution. So read a book under 150 pages. This was also really hard. Originally, I was going to read The Slow Regard of Silent Things, but then my friend Kayla from Book of Doodles actually told me on a whim, without even knowing I was going to read it, that she recommends that be read after The Wise Man's Fear, and I don't even plan on reading The Wise Man's Fear anytime soon, so I'm putting that one off. And I'm actually going to read another comic, which is the only comic I own that is under 150 pages, and that is the first volume of Descender, for a similar reason as Monstrous, just catching up on my comics, and they're really rereads. So I did Herbology, and I was like, wow, three books? Like, I'm going to get through that for sure. So I'm kind of planning on reading a lot of these different prompts from these different careers and kind of seeing how many careers I can fit. So I actually picked two more careers with increasing difficulty and a lot of these have crossover classes and stuff so I'll be reading from a number of these prompts probably. So the second career that I decided to potentially go for is the Trader of Magical Tomes career or the bookseller. This one is new for this year and you can also take some like side classes. What does she call them? Not quite, not conferences, almost like certificates and there's like add-on prompts for that. So I decided for this to do the Magical Tomes Bookseller with the Magical Shop Management certificate, which ends up giving me five prompts because the Magical Tome Trader has four prompts and then the certificate gives me an extra one. So this was my medium difficulty if I want to go for that. So the first class is Ancient Runes and that is the Heart Rune, so read a book with a heart on the cover. This was also almost impossible. I have one book that fits this prompt and that is Crier's War by Nina Varela and that has this little heart right here and that's the only one. This is great too because I use the owls especially because their prompts are so random to pick books that I like probably wasn't going to pick based off mood anytime soon. So this is one that like I wanted to keep my TBR but I probably wasn't going to pick up as quickly and now I probably will. <laughs> then the second class is Charms and that's for the Charm Luminos Maxima and that is to read a book with a white cover. For that I chose The Queen of the Conquered by Case and Calendar and this is one that I have been wanting to read anyway but then Brody was talking about this on 
Twitter and they were saying how much they loved this book and the politicalness of it and like morally great character and all this stuff. So now it really bummed it up the TBR so I definitely want to read this like as soon as possible anyway. Then the third class is The History of Magic and that is a book featuring witches or wizards. I actually gave myself two options for this because one is kind of like loosely this but not quite. I actually have gotten rid of a lot of the books on my TBR that are for witches and stuff because I've read them. <laughs> so the first option is The Wise and the Wicked by Rebecca Potos. This is another book that has just kind of been chilling on my TBR and I haven't been super motivated to pick it up. But this is about sort of like a family of... <sighs> I would almost say they're like Russian witches a bit. Like they definitely have like magical powers, but I'm not necessarily sure if they call them witches. They just all like have magical abilities. So I'm like, you're witches, right? But then if I don't feel like reading that one, one that is more concretely witches, there are witches in here, is A Sorrow Fierce and Falling by Jessica Cluis, which is the third book in the Kingdom on Fire series. This features sorcerers, witches, and magicians are the three types of magic users in this world. So this one more concretely fits. Then the fourth class is Transfiguration and that's for the Animagus and to read a book with shape-shifting in it. Now I don't know if I have any books with shape-shifting in it. So again this one is like very very loose and that is The Storm of Locusts by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is the second book in the what's the name of the series? Sixth World series and this has Native American folklore mythology in it and I believe at least in the first book there was like there's gods that can shape shift and things so this says a shape shifting in the book or the series so I'm kind of loosely counting this I'm not sure if it'll be shape shifting in this like in the actual book in a traditional sense but I'm using it and then for the magical shop management certificate you have to read a book from the arithmancy category class and that is for reading a book outside of your favorite genre for like an opposites balance thing and for that I'm picking The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. This is technically literary fiction but her stuff tends to have some kind of like magical-ish element to it. I don't know if this will. Station Eleven was post-apocalyptic. I'm not sure if this will have anything like that but it's literary fiction. This is also our House Salt book club pick for April so we will be doing a live show on my channel discussing this book anyway. So I'm hitting two bears with one stone. So that is what we have for magical shop owner bookseller. Now the last potential career I picked is the most ambitious one that I picked and that is Mind Medic. I think Mind Medic is one of the ones I was going for last year and didn't quite make it. I think because I was doing the BookTube SFF Awards at the time so I was having to read some books that were kind of in all these different categories for that as well so I wasn't able to kind of like devote myself to a career path the way that I can this year so we'll see how things change. This has eight prompts so it is my most ambitious one. I think I can do it with a like you know very free time intense month ahead of me because I, I've been reading like around eight books a month ish so I think it's possible and I read I think about eight books last year when I did this I want to say. But this also has a lot of crossover with the magical bookseller thing so I could potentially pursue like a ton of careers. So the first class overlaps already with the magical tome seller that is Ancient Runes with Crier's War. Another overlap with Arithmancy and the Glass Hotel. Another overlap with Charms and the Queen of the Conquered. Then we have a new class and that is Defense Against the Dark Arts and that's to read a book that takes place on the coast or at sea. And for that I have Dark Shores by Danielle L. Jensen. This is one that I've been wanting to read and kept my TBR. It's like a piratey book. So this is perfect for that because it's pretty much going to take place all on the sea. Then I have a crossover with Herbologist and that is Herbology. So for that I'd be reading Monstrous. Then we have Muggle Studies and that's to read a contemporary book. This will probably be fulfilled by any of the books that are on my Kindle right now. I keep adult contemporary romance on my Kindle. I buy a number of them like on sale or free. So I only buy Kindle books that are like $2.99 or less on sale because I will look out for sales and stuff. Or things that I request from NetGalley because I basically only request romances from NetGalley, which I just started doing. I've not requested like anything from NetGalley for like years and I was like, wait, I can request adult contemporary romance from NetGalley. So I started doing that. So I will pick something because I tend to read like contemporary books on my Kindle right before bed so that my mind is like relaxing and not getting like ramped up by my fantasy and sci-fi. So I will read something off there but I just I don't know what. I'll probably read a number of books off of there to be honest. Then another crossover with Herbologist and that is Potions. So read a book on 150 pages. So Descender Volume 1 again. And lastly we have Transfiguration again which is the shape-shifting one. So that would be Storm of Locusts by Rebecca Roanhorse. So as you can see most of these categories have a ton of overlap. So I'm actually going to try to read almost all the books that I talked about here because 
I don't really have any chunky books on here so I really should be able to fly through a lot of these books and I will DNF things if I'm not enjoying them just to like clear stuff out so yeah I'm pretty excited about this also I'm doing kind of like multiple careers and reading as many prompts as possible because I know for a fact that when the newts roll around which is the second more complicated readathon in August I'm not gonna be able to read some of these more intense things like if I do mind medic here which is one of the harder ones I won't be able to do mind medic in August because I'll be too busy August is traditionally my lowest reading month I did horrible on the newts last year I just don't read a ton it's really busy my birthday's during that month booknet fest is during that month this year there's just a lot going on and I just don't read a lot during the summer as much as I do other months so I just know that like I should probably go for a biologist again in August or like something lower so I'm hoping that this gives me a little bit more flexibility for the newts as well while also getting a lot of reading done this month if you can hear people walking around it's because my parents are walking around upstairs so it's like I'm in a dungeon down here but that is it for my owls readathon potential TBR comment down below and let me know what you guys pick I felt like some of these prompts were hard for me to find books on my TBR for so comment down below and let me know some of your picks and what careers you're going for so thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon bye